Season 4 of Guilty Gear Strive is here, and it's a massive balance patch with changes to the entire cast of characters. When you have so many changes going on, up to the hundreds of changes across the entire game, there's a lot of things that can happen within the code of the game that may or may not be intended, resulting in some unusual looking behavior in terms of characters' moves, as well as interactions. In this video, I'm going to try to highlight a couple of things that don't seem like they were intentional behaviors of the characters, that are also game-breakingly strong and overtuned, just to try and a raise awareness of these behaviors in the game so that hopefully Arc System Works is going to be able to come out with an additional follow-up patch to address them. Without further ado, let's jump into what I think are some game-breaking behaviors in the current Season 4 patch of Guilty Gear Strive. Let's start with Kai Kisuke, particularly in his Dragon Install state. Normally, when it comes to characters that have fireballs, there's usually a limit to how many projectiles a character can have on the screen at a given time. For example, if I'm full screen here with Kai Kisuke and I use the slash version of Sun Edge, you can see that while that fireball is out, I can't actually throw out a second fireball to accompany it. This is usually a coding thing that's done to make sure that there's not going to be unintentional like layering of fireballs. This is something very common in fighting games as a whole. If you ever played a game like Street Fighter 6, you'll see that while Ryu, for example, has a Hadouken out on the screen, he can't fire another Hadouken until it either passes off screen or makes contact with the opponent. This is a very intentional thing, but there's a way for Kai Kisuke, particularly within this Dragon install state, for him to actually break it, and it becomes an issue due to the buffs that stock sh uh, Shock State received. Now, it seems like there's a tricky state where Kai is somehow able to trick the game into thinking that there isn't a charge stun edge out, because normally when he goes for a charge stun edge, if he tries to fire another one, he's not going to get it. I'm spamming quarter circle forward there. And as you can see, as I press it, I get like six heavy instead of another fireball. However, it seems like if you do a standing light kick, and then instead of doing a quarter circle forward, you do a half circle forward, you're able to then fire a charge stun edge much sooner than you should be able to. To very simply demonstrate this, we're going to start at full screen where this can become a certainly big issue. So I'm going to throw out a charge stun edge and then I'm going to try and make it so that the game loses track of the fact that there already is this fireball out on screen so that Kai actually fires another charge stun edge before he should be able to. As you can see, like, not quite getting it there, but now I have it. As you can see, as long as I continue to do this series of inputs, this combo, which is resourceless and everything like that, goes on forever. And if the opponent were to somehow block the first hit and I get this going, it's probably a true block string as well that's continually doing chip damage um, on Kai Kisuke's part. This should not be a thing. This is like genuinely game breaking. The question becomes, how likely is it to actually be applicable and usable within a real match situation? Well, let's take a few looks at Twitter just to see some possible examples of tech using this bug. The methods I've demonstrated so far aren't necessarily required. They were simply timing tools. Here we have an example from Streamable demonstrating that Kai Kisuke off of a throw situation is able to go into this infinite block string as well. And, I mean, he doesn't even have to run up and maintain this offense. Throw, charge stun edge, a little dash forward, set up the timing, and then he's able to just keep shooting out all of these fireballs while the other one is active. Like, you can basically just time scam the opponent. They can FD for a little bit of time, sure, but they're going to be taking all this chip damage, spending out all of their tension gauge just to avoid it until they eventually run out of the resource, and you can just win the game effectively off of this, putting them into chip kill range. Like, th this shouldn't exist in the game. This sh simply shouldn't be able to do, and this situation, you have to think about how common it is for a character like Kai to actually get a throw, and looking at what it actually takes to set up. This is way too simple to do, and is arguably incredibly match practical for Kai Kisuke to try and go for in order to cheese out a victory. The next clip here is courtesy of Osaru Takun, who also demonstrates that you can set up some infinite combos with it as well to just basically guarantee that you kill the opponent incredibly slowly. As I demonstrated earlier, 
this can effectively happen. And if you probably can find ways to set this up using like 50% of your tension gauge and go for like a blue RC extension to get the first charge fireball out and then get the timing so that you continually do these fireballs, you can effectively one touch the opponent and slowly kill them like this in a way that is certainly anti-competitive and unfun and it has to be unintentional just given how the basic rules of usual fireball occupation on the screen where you should be limited to one fireball should behave the next bug I'd like to go over or at least the thing I would consider to be a bug is going to be Ramlethal's sword toss special moves so they got completely reworked within this version of the game to now being these uh, moves that are on a cooldown based timer. Ramlethal throws a sword, the first hit will guard crush, and then she can't interact with the sword until it gets picked up. So, a lot of things are like changing here, but the basic idea was to make it so that Ramlethal wasn't this infinite mid dispenser once she put you into the corner by being able to run up, pick up the sword, string into another sword toss that you then had to respect the explosion for until she cranked her wrist gauge and then put you into a high low mix up with like 2k or 5d. However, there seems to be some behaviors that at the very least don't make sense. The first one we're going to get into is going to be this ability for Sword Toss to actually trade favorably, incredibly so, with the opponent. I have it set up so that we're going to do a round start simulation here to basically show what could happen if you're buffering a slash Sword Toss at round start and the opponent chooses to swing into you. Duel 1. Let's rock it. As you can see, despite Ramlethal getting hit out of the startup of the Sword Toss, the Sword Toss itself is still primed and will hit the opponent with such a substantial launch that Ramlethal is able to walk up and pick up a full combo. With her new combo writing that she has with various buffs to her, she can actually wall break from this situation, and this basically means that like you can't contest her at round start really, because if your round start isn't fast enough to actually completely stuff the startup of Sword Toss and she's able to get this primed, you're risking a wall break just to tap Ramlethal. And this is not the only situation where this ability for her sword toss to trade so favorably like this occurs. Courtesy of Dokoi Migu on Twitter, we can actually also see that this is something that she can use to her advantage on the opponent's wake up. She's knocking down Sin and he's going to wake up with a DP and she's going to prime a slash sword toss. She gets fully hit here and... She's still able, after being knocked to full screen, able to pick up and confirm a combo. Like, this doesn't seem correct. This doesn't seem like this is how it should be. Now, I, for one, can appreciate that this is a somewhat more limited resource for Ram Lethal to use, but there's also a lot more universal applications for Slash Sword Toss than there was before. Both sword tosses really had most of their utility within the corner itself, and there they were incredibly strong. Now this slash sword toss has utility anywhere on screen, and as long as she has access to this, the opponent has to respect the wake-up. And I can respect the fact that, hey, this should arguably be a strong move for Ramlethal, but this seems a little, like, too crazy good. Like, you shouldn't, she shouldn't be able to get hit by a DP at round start, and then full pick up the combo anyway. Like, something in my opinion, has to give here, and this can't be a completely intentional behavior of the move itself. One other thing I wish to document in this video, and this is one where I'm not entirely sure if this is a bug or not, is how the guard crush behavior of the new sword tosses actually behave against the opponent. So the patch notes themselves say that a guard crush effect was added to the sword uh, strike. So if you remember before, the explosion is what caused a guard crush in the previous patch, and now in this patch, if you toss the sword, you get a guard crush, but then if the sword toss causes a guard crush... The explosion does not. We see here that Queen Dizzy does not actually get Guard Crush. However, if Ramlethal runs up and throws and causes the sword throw to whiff, and the explosion is blocked, the explosion, which didn't Guard Crush in the first example, now Guard Crushes. So it seems like that this is a behavior where the sword is somehow coded for the first time it's blocked by an opponent is what causes a Guard Crush to actually occur. I don't know if this particular behavior is a bug. I can see some intentionality behind having setups like this where you want to use the sword explosion to guard crush, right? You want to have like the sword down and time your approach like that and still have access to it. But I don't know what's intentional and what's not, especially when you consider just like the crazy trade situations that Ramlethal is able to get from these swords because they don't disappear if she's hit out of them on startup. It feels like this is either a very strong thing to give the character, maybe even too strong, in fact, or 
this is an un something here is unintentional and I'm not sure what it is. Um, this is something where I think it's a little more debatable as to whether or not uh, this is a bug per se with all of Ramlethal stuff, but this is something where I want to go to you, the viewers. I'm pretty sure Ramlethal players are quite happy with any of these behaviors, whereas people who have to fight Ramlethal are already going, oh, this is the reality right now. I'm including here in this video just in case it is a bug, just to raise awareness for it, but we'll see if there's any addressments or things that come out from Arc System Works uh, within the near future to try and address any of the issues that are in the game, and we'll see whether or not any of these Ramlethal behaviors change going forward, but there's a lot of weird finicky stuff within this patch, and this is something I wanted to highlight just in case, because I feel like this is something that overall is not going to be uh, healthy to the game, and something that seems to be counterbalanced to Arc System System works professing they wanted to increase the number of interactions when Ramlethal is very much saying, stop interacting with me. The last bug that I think should be addressed within the patch itself has to do with the new character, Queen Dizzy. Now, she has a fireball move where she throws out an ice sickle against the opponent, and then she can do a follow-up to then cause it to cover the entire field in ice, thus making movement a lot slower for the enemy and a little better for herself. However, it seems like there's some weird coding when it comes to how momentum is calculated at the initial startup frames of uh, the ice field actually spreading through. So, this is a clip from Odawara uh, actually demonstrating a humorous, if you will, interaction. <laughs> You see the fireball comes out, and then Gold Lewis just skates all the way through because of the ice field initially, leading to a sequence like this that slabbed out into like a TOD. And it very much seems like this slide on the ice when it's initially detonating is not intentional whatsoever. I also need to do a big shout to Reversal for compiling a couple of Twitter clips that demonstrate various characters from various Twitter accounts from players taking advantage of this unintentional ice-filled momentum at the startup of the move when Disney detonates it. So, thank you so much to Mascus and Reversal for actually giving me a short, simple video for us to refer to right here. We're, as we watch these videos, pay close attention to the ground itself, as you'll see that most of these characters get this unnatural sliding momentum to skip the entire screen against Dizzy before the ice even covers the field. An example with Johnny, an example with Slayer, and an example with Soul. A little slow-mo added by NVFGC. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that while the current version of the game is out, and if you are playing Dizzy, you can circumvent this by not activating your ice field on block it against an opponent, but that very much still feels bad. You should be able to say, you block this, I'm at this full screen range where you can't, shouldn't rather be able to interact with me. Now I'm going to slow down your movement on the ice field so that I have more control over my zoning game plan, but as it is, you can't even do that with Dizzy at the moment. So this is something that desperately needs to be patched just to make sure that Dizzy functions uh, the way that Arc System Works, I imagine, intended her too. That's it for the video. Now, I'm unsure as to whether or not the Ramlethal stuff are actually bugs per se, but they do definitely seem like some crazy unintentionally strong behaviors for the character, but um, we can probably get some context from Arc System Works in the future. As for the Dizzy and the Kai stuff, those for sure are bugs that do need some form of addressment from Arc System Works, and if you find any other such bugs like this, um, do your due diligence, I would say. If you have like a Twitter account or if you have access to like an email or something like that, go ahead and get in contact with Arc System Works. You can tag them on Twitter here. Uh, include like maybe like a bug report hashtag or guilty uh, the GGST tag on Twitter uh, along with the character tag itself in order to help Arc System Works be aware of the fact that there's a couple of issues in the game and they need to go over with like a hot fix patch um, before we have anything else really going on with it. So that's the one thing I wanted to highlight. Please be respectful with your communication towards Arc System Works. Um, it's hard developing a video game and they did a massive patch and of course there's going to be things that fall through, things that don't get picked up until a wider audience gets their hands on the game. So, you know, ask them, hey, is this an intentional behavior? This seems a little bit buggy. Just be respectful to these hardworking developers uh, because 
they care about their product. They want us to have a good experience with their product. And if things like this are not intentionally happening, it's something that is going to stress them out. And we don't need to add on to their stress with disrespectful communication. That's one thing I wanted to highlight. Anyways, thank you all for watching this video. Um, if you have any other bugs that you'd like to mention in the comments of this video, or if you want to argue against some of these things being a bug or not, whether it's seriously or in fun, uh, light up the comment section below. I'll be working on more character uh, patch note breakdowns uh, for the Season 4 Guild Gear Strive patch as time goes on and we see if there's going to be a couple of touch-up fixes going forward for the patch. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Catching around.